Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Um, if you're new, a very, very warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share uh, with your fellow trading colleagues um, this video and all my other videos on my uh, YouTube page. Uh, support the channel uh, by liking and subscribing. It's a free way to support the channel and really uh, gets the uh, quality content uh, to the top of the uh, YouTube list and recommendations. So. Um, again, just a quick one about trading 180 and our process is really we're applying fundamental analysis to establish directional bias and then apply technical analysis strategies or supply and demand strategies to time the market, uh, uh, time trade entries, I guess, um, and uh, risk management and establish uh, profit targets. So we're using the best really of both worlds um, to make the best trading decisions. So starting off uh, with the uh, I guess the calendar and the week ahead, ahead on uh, trading economics, and uh, uh, I guess this the little snapshot here. But I'll get into some of the um, the paragraphs down below. In the week ahead, uh, talks about stocks and also speeches from the Fed officials, U.S. consumer sentiment, U.K. U.K.'s March GDP. That's going to be important. Uh, data and eurozone industrial production will be closely watched finally it will be a busy week which with in china uh, with inflation figures and trade data taking uh, central stage so getting a bit more into um, uh, the details so in the u.s cpr report is expected to show an annual inflation rate eased to 8.1 from a 41 year high of 8.5 so the federal reserve are really um, hoping that that is the case if inflation can um, ease off a little bit obviously um, uh, and um, yeah because it gives really the economy time to grow right as well the fed actually don't want to hike rates but uh, um, and, and and increase borrowing and lending costs so they're really hoping that um, the uh, the dollar has increased or appreciated in value to the point where it starts to bring inflation down and hopefully it's not just a, a pullback and it's rather the beginning of a new uh, trend to the downside. Uh, in March, while the call rate is seen falling uh, to 6 from 6.5, still the inflation is not expected to fall to pre-pandemic levels anytime soon and will remain above the Fed's 2% target. You know, we talk about this uh, inflation target, not just the Fed, it's general, generally, you know, most uh, Western central banks that have a two percent uh, inflation target uh, for a, uh, for a long time as supply disruptions persist and energy prices remain elevated so investors will also keep a close eye on the batch of speeches from fed officials so that obviously lets the market know what the fed is thinking about um, monetary policy and there's other releases producer prices trade price indexes preliminary readings uh, and so on and so forth let me see and there's uh, nothing really elsewhere in america no nope, not that one and then the uk uh, will be publishing preliminary estimates of first quarter gdp uh, and that's gonna, again that's going to be important uh, because as we'll discuss a bit further um uh, the, the 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 bank of england um are in a bit of a uh, most central banks are, but the Bank of England more so uh, talking about stagflation and um, being hit, uh, one of the hardest hit um, in terms of uh, economic growth. So um, it kind of puts them in a really difficult situation because typically central banks shouldn't be hiking rates as um, as uh, GDP is slowing down, right? And that's what's known as stagflation. Anyway, so that's going to be very interesting to see what the effects of, um, you know, the Ukraine war, uh, as well as um, inflation is going to have and cost of living crisis is going to have on the economy and business investment data alongside foreign trade balance, industrial production and construction output for March. So British, the British economy likely grew 1% in the first quarter, easing from a 1.3% expansion at the end of last year due to the decline in household income. So we'll be potentially seeing a bit of a, um, a um, even, although they use the word grew, a bit of a decline and, and, and an easing in the um, 
in the, uh, the the growth numbers. And it says elsewhere in Europe, factory activity in Euro in the Euro area probably declined in March uh, when most of the impact of the Ukraine war started to be reflected. Also, German investor morale is seen falling for the third consecutive month. Germany being Europe's powerhouse, so Germany have definitely watched when it comes to um, a lot of their economic data. Remaining lowest level since March 2020. And other key data include their um, ZEW um, economic risk sentiment, Germany final inflation figures, France and Italy, and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, things to uh, to really kind of think about um, when it comes to fundamentals. And uh, I'll get into I guess my biases uh, now when we start talking about the technicals and uh, going forward and starting off on the dollar index, dollar index. Uh, we start off on and uh, I tend to uh, uh, keep the analysis on generally every week but this week I will take it off start it again and just uh, you know draw in some fresh uh, demand zones or supply zones uh, so demand there's demand here and in fact you probably draw it down here and I think from um, from a dollar index perspective and a dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against major currencies um, if we zoom out then if you are buying the dollar on any of the other dollar crosses, just realize that you are you know, buying at expensive areas. Ultimately, you really want to wait for pullbacks as confluence, right? You don't necessarily have to, but it's uh, you know waiting for demand zones on the dollar index as confluence is always nice to have, right? And it gives you a, a nice perspective as to whether the dollar is actually expensive against various other currencies or if you know you want to be buying at bargains which is ultimately what you want to be doing right so looking at some of the fundamental analysis and the fed officials defend policies say forward guidance is working so uh you know waller and bullard say fed guidance has had uh, substan substantial impact and barking declines to take 75 basis point hike off the table so again to get uh, inflation down central banks have to hike interest rates and so um, there was talk about the Fed basically being behind the curve and it should have hiked sooner um, to keep inflation down inflation wouldn't be where it is oh um, I'll wait um, so with that you know there's a bit of pushback on that on that argument so two of the Federal Reserve's most hawkish policymakers defended the central bank on Friday against charges that it had fallen well behind the curve in fighting inflation and so um, Fed Governor Christopher Waller and St. Louis uh, Fed Bank President James Bullard argued that critics don't uh, take enough account of the tightening of financial conditions that the Fed uh, engineered even before it began raising uh, rates in March. So um, the fact that they're still talking about rate hikes for now and they're on a hiking cycle which can, you know, uh, last for um, a while. And when I say a while, you know, it could be, it could start to last maybe a year or two, right? Um, just to get inflation back down to a 2% target. Um, you know, the, the, the point in this article is really to understand what they're thinking and what they're looking to do with uh, monetary policy. So they're looking to, again, uh, uh, still to continue to hike rates uh, this year. So the Fed goes marching. Markets see the Fed quickening rate increases this year, right? So with that being said, for me, um, you know, the, the Fed are, are pretty much ahead of most central banks. So any pullbacks for me are buying opportunities into, you know, certain zones. Buying at highs is not something that I, you know, like to do, Um uh, or will do anyway because you're buying at expensive areas even if prices go higher that's fine right and then i'll just wait for a pullback but the point is is that my bias is to still buy the uh, the dollar on the um you know dollar yen dollar swiss for example um and look for demand zones and those currencies some pullbacks decent pullbacks on those currencies and talking about those currencies getting into um the dollar yen and again looking at the technicals uh, just looking at the daily uh, we've got that area there as a decent area to look for any kind of long trades also have um, demand zone right here as well is there hidden demand no not yet so any pullbacks I think is into that into that one two eight one two seven area it's probably going to be decent for a potential buy um, uh, and even better still would be the one two two one two one area 
don't know whether it's going to get down there anytime soon. It could. Uh, the, the the yen, on the other hand, are you know looking at this uh, um, uh, this exchange rate as being a bit problematic. Uh, they don't really need the uh, the yen to uh, de decrease in value. So. Um, uh, so they are looking to potentially intervene or already intervening at the 130 in between. You know, I've seen reports from bank analysis that have said that even 135 could be potentially the, the, the ceiling. Um, so you could actually see prices pull back and still move up to the upside uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the dollar uh, yen. Um, but either way, I'm still going to be a buyer of the dollar uh, for now. Um, because the uh, Bank of Japan are again just behind the curve and they're actually quite dovish as well when it comes to uh, um, their monetary policy. Um, moving, and again, if you do want to be a seller, let's look at the sells. There is lower highs, lower lows being made here. So there is a, a supply zone there, not necessarily the strongest supply in the world. And again, for me, if you are getting short here, you would have to really understand why the, the yen is a bargain against the uh, dollar, which is going to be very hard to justify for me fundamentally. So part of these resistances to the upside, again, not financial advice, just telling you what um, my bias is. Uh, dollar Swiss, again, same thing as the dollar yen. We've made higher highs here. Um, and again, just looking for some pullbacks, and this has been a very, you know, strong um, uh, trend. And again, it's not hard to tell and hard to see why when you consider both central bank monetary policies. So any pullbacks into uh, a zone, um, especially the lower end of the demand zone, um, is going to be definitely uh, buying opportunities um, uh, for me anyway. And uh, let's see what happens. Um, you know, in these zones, and uh, yeah, I think the Swiss franc again probably better than the uh, than the yen in terms of uh, the way their central bank is and their monetary policy, and even you know their economy. But um, but the dollar still, you know, the best out of the two. If you're looking at any kind of short trades, there is we are at pretty much a decent high. I'm looking at an area of supply quite a wide area of supply to be fair but um you've got that area yeah, so we've come into the zone but um again for me just because prices you know dropped from here back in march 2020 which was which would have been the um uh, coronavirus the start of the coronavirus or you know the peak of that um who you know who's to say that prices are going to drop you know here the same reason right it's not the same you know we're not in the same um, economic environment so prices can you know go straight through that supply zone um, uh, if they want to obviously there's probably looking at potential profit taking um, because prices have literally been on a you know couple of hundred pip tear a few hundred pips maybe we'll say maybe but looking at from the low to the highest probably about nearly 800 I would say uh, yeah, 700 pips uh, to the upside with rarely any 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 pullback. So uh, there is, um, uh, I guess, a potential pullback coming. And if it comes in, that's going to be the first area to look for potential uh, long trades. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD is again a very interesting one. Typically, not a trade idea that I would look towards taking fundamentally. But in the group, um, we've discussed. Uh, various reasons as to why I want to be uh, actually uh, short on this currency pair. I'm not going to go into the potential setup um, or the, the setup that we're looking at because it's beyond the scope of uh, of this uh, video but um, ultimately probably looking for some short trades in and around uh, this 130 zone. Uh, just above that there is a supply zone just there as well. So uh, the one thirties um, are is really the area to look for for me anyway. Looking for any kind of uh, short trades. Um, if you do want to be a buyer of the U.S. dollar at this point in time, there is demand zone in around that area. Um, and when you get wide demand zones, by the way, um, you can just break them down into uh, different areas of support and resistance. So just finding out where those support and resistance are within that wide zone. I do think, in fact, 
that that lower zone here is going to be quite nice for a potential buy technically because if you go down into a maybe something like a one hour time frame chart you can see where within that demand zone price has touched several times right you've got a level there you've got a level there and uh, if prices do come down I do think in fact that's um, actually I would say it's decent it's not the most decent um, area to, to get into but if you're a support and resistance trader and you think that um, you know that the more times the level is touched the stronger it becomes I don't believe that so I believe it is the weaker it becomes um, you know uh, then that's basically the, uh, the area to look for any kind of long trades in fact I'm more interested in the, the zone just below that area which is going to be here this is where I'm probably more interested in just that zone below there um, so yeah there's a bit of an area there that I'm interested in so that 127 round number is what I would be looking for to get uh, long um, if I was looking to get long that is but I'm looking actually at short trades so let's see what happens um, on that dollar CAD moving back to the daily um, and then New Zealand dollar US dollar uh, the commodity currencies generally typically don't do well in the risk off environment which we are in at the moment um, and the the, uh, the dollar does act as a safe haven so again in a straight fight the yen sorry the uh, sorry New Zealand dollar I don't know why I said the yen should want to uh, strengthen sorry the New Zealand dollar should want to weaken uh, against the uh, US dollar as the US dollar is um, considered a safe haven currency as well and again we do have a bit of a demand zone here from June 2020 but again for me it's purely just a technical um, stop hunt there would have been a lot of traders looking at getting long there now they've been stop hunted but um, for me uh, not really a pair that I'm looking to get involved in technically this is a, uh, a supply zone as well um, I think the dollar is still a buy um, and even the New Zealand dollar is a buy for me but just not against the uh, the US dollar so if you are looking at the uh, the divergence of risk sentiment then I would say probably the top end of this zone this supply zone the 6550s would be a decent area to look for any kind of short trades as well as you've got some confluence horizontal confluence within that area as well so that's that would be quite nice as um, like I said as, as some confluence within that area um, pound dollar, pound dollar, still looking to short this, but prices just won't come back. Um, if it does come back to this area, though, I think I will be looking at potential shorts again, just depending on the setup and my uh, technical setup. But if prices do pull back, you know, a couple of hundred pips to like the 126 area, I think that's going to be very nice for a potential short. The pound, and going into some fundamental analysis on the pound. Um, UK assets suffer after Bank of England's gloomy prognosis on recession. So the pound slides to lowest since June 2020 on growth outlook, and the FTSE looks like Haven uh, looks like Haven as domestic focus stocks struggle. I'm not sure what's going on there? Um, and struggling UK assets looked uh, set for more pain after the Bank of England warned of recession in the most downbeat outlook of any major central bank. So I've been saying this for probably about a month or so um, that. Uh, you know, I switched my bias somewhere around, uh, you know, maybe mid mid March, end of March, um, talking about potential uh, stagflation and pound stagflation. And uh, I was saying in, in a straight fight that, you know, I think the, the dollar was the one to buy anyway, and um, you know, proven to be, uh, you know, on on the money. But it's now just looking at how to get involved in this trade technically. So uh, for me, it's pullbacks especially to that 126 area I think is nice if not I do think this 130 is going to be very 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 nice for a potential short um, you know the pound are lagging behind although their central bank is hiking rates um, that is coming off um, or may come to an end and have to come to an end simply because of the uh, the economy right you don't want to hurt the economy more by hiking rates um, and hiking borrowing costs so for me bias is to the short side um, euro dollar so euro dollar um, this week a lot of traders got caught going uh, potentially long um, during the week 
on that euro dollar i personally again i'm still short on that euro dollar but i really want a better pullback into that zone into the 108 before looking at getting short um uh, at the moment is there really a reason to potentially buy i'm going to ignore every any any demand zones past you know two years um but for me it's uh, really looking for pullbacks before getting short still. Uh, the euro could have a reason to uh, um, start to uh, increase in value slightly. And the ECB Holzman suggests two to three rate hikes this year. And rate hikes typically have the, uh, the effect of um, appreciating a currency. So the hawks are out in force. The European Central Bank could raise rates uh, two to three times in a small in small increments this year to tackle inflation, according to governing council member Robert Holzman. And um, so talk, taking at least two or three steps would be appropriate, Holzman said in an interview with Salzburg uh, Nachricht, and I think that's how you pronounce it, a newspaper. The um, the moves can be 25 basis points each, but raising rates above zero next year would be a strong signal to the public, even if it would be a fair uh, part of the way to go before achieving rates that are neutral for the economy. So there's some uh, governing council members, the hawk is, hawks and the doves, and it looks like it's more, uh, looks like they're, they're more on the hawk side as far as there's more um, uh, governing council members that are hawkish than, than dovish. So going back to um, you know the the buying of the euro we could see um, that happen but also as well on top of that um, the the markets the FX markets uh, potentially seeing parity come into play as well uh, you know the, the Russia Ukraine tensions are uh, not great for the economy and if um, data comes out as being poor for or getting worse for the euro as much as the central bank want to hike rates you know whether they can or is going to be another problem because they're trying to stop the decline i guess in the euro and uh, parity would be somewhere around here so there's actually still another maybe 500 pips potentially of downside to go um especially against the dollar the dollar being you know the, the stronger out of the two and um and so yeah uh, there's there's that you know risk headwinds so um, again all eyes on the economic data really um, when it comes to the euro any pullbacks for me are uh, shorting opportunities unless um, the euro either um, you know has really positive data really outstanding positive data um, and also as well whether the Russia Ukraine conflict comes to an end and that would definitely be a sentiment driver. Um, looking towards the euro dollar, um, sorry, the Aussie dollar, uh, Australian dollar, US dollar. Again, not really a pair that I'm interested in, but like the New Zealand dollar, um, US dollar pair, um, the US dollar should strengthen over the um, the commodity currency as a, as a safe haven uh, play. You do actually have demand here as well. There's a demand zone there. From a supply zone perspective, the most clear evidence of, of evidence of supply is going to be that zone there. Um, I hesitate to draw a supply right here because um, it's not really how I would draw supply. Although you could make an argument for it, but um, I'll keep it there. Matter of fact, but if I am if 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 I was looking to take any trades here. It would have to be within that wide area of supply. It would have to be with some confluence, which is going to be um, that level of uh, resistance. So any pullbacks to this zone here will be the first area. And then the second area would be really up, up top there. You can probably see that that area has also been traded as uh, support and resistance right within that zone. Yes, yeah, so you've got resistance, you've got resistance areas there, support there. So decent, those are the two areas if I was looking to get short. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. But the uh, again, I think the path of resistance at the moment is probably to the dollar downside, US dollar downside. But I do think if uh, you know China starts to grow again, I think this is gonna be a very, the Australian dollar is a buy um, against other currencies, just not against for me, the, uh, the uh, US dollar. Aussie yen, Aussie yen. Um, last week we did come down to this demand zone. Prices did 
break slightly through, but it created a new demand zone here. So I'm going to basically draw that from there and uh, that. So any pullbacks, because prices are making higher highs, higher lows. I think any pullbacks into this, just this, the bottom end of that um, demand zone is definitely going to be an area to look for any kind of uh, long trades. If you're looking to buy your Australian dollar, which I am. I'm more biased towards buying the Australian dollar than selling the Australian dollar against the uh, against the yen, and uh, I think that's going to be the first area to look for um, sell trades if you're looking at um, shorting the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen um, at some point. So yeah, we've got definitely a, um, a bit of an auction being established potentially uh, between that. Uh, 95 or 96 round number to the 90 and a half area so uh, let's see what happens there and finally gold gold um, coming down to this demand zone and reacting from that uh, gold for me is still a buy I do like gold as a buy still um, and uh, yeah just to kind of back that up there was a video and Barrick CEO says gold closer to 2000 by the year end. Uh, there are obviously reasons for that. Um, high inflation, uh, lots of you know risk off uncertainty. And uh, so gold closer to 2000. So you could see, you know, some upside potential around here. It's where 2000 is. So this is a decent buy for gold. If things start to get worse for, you know, the economies lockdown etc then gold as a safe haven play is going to be very nice i think but gold was pretty much due a bit of a pullback anyways um but yeah i think gold is a buy if you are looking to sell gold in short gold then there are areas right here supply supply and then that area i should, I should draw that from here to here actually in fact you can draw it all the way up to be fair but I'll just draw it from there to there. Those are the three areas that you really want to look for to short gold in the uh, in the short term. So then just go down into either a lower time frame, it could be the two hour, the one hour, and uh, look for any kind of short trades. If you're looking at you know uh, shorting gold, any long trades, probably somewhere around that one uh, the 1860, 1850 areas. I think that's going to be actually quite, quite nice. 1854 is going to be nice for a potential buy. Anyways, um, that's it for this week and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you have a great trading week and guys take care until the next video.